And so let's just take a look at what we have in here. So if you're not familiar with a .NET Core project, the startup class essentially configures the services that we're going to use in our application as well as our request pipeline or our HTTP middleware. So um, within this configure services method, we uh, configure any services that will be required um, for use by our application. It's actually an optional method, so it's actually not required um, in our startup class like the configure method is but it's called by the web host before the configure method in order to set up the various services that we would um, set up here. So we have this iService collection interface here, which um, essentially defines a container, which will define the various uh, services that we can then access um, throughout our application using dependency injection. So .NET Core is really designed with dependency injection built in, so it's got a really minimal um, sort of DI feature set built in and um, you can definitely still use other DI containers or implementations outside of the one that's built in um, but for our purposes this one will work fine for now and so any services that we add here in our configure services method um, become available uh, within our application and within the configure method. Instances of these services are resolved via dependency injection. And again, you could use a, a different dependency injection here, um, but the, the simple dependency injection provided with um, .NET Core will be um, just fine for our purposes for now. Next, we have this configure method, and really this is where our request pipeline is configured by adding different middleware components. Um, to this iApplication builder. So we can do things like set up uh, exception pages and error pages, that sort of thing. Um, we can say that we want to use static files, use identity server, use MVC, um, and we could also define uh, some of our MVC routes here as well by mapping um, names to various templates and that sort of thing. Um, for our STS here, we're just going to use the defaults that the template has provided us with for now, and we're going to focus on the services that we have configured here. So you can see that we're adding uh, a DB context here of application DB context type that's been created for us. If I uh, F12 over there or function F12, we can see that it extends this identity DB context, which is um, abstract class that's in the ASP net core identity entity framework core namespace and so this is essentially sort of just a special um, implementation of a db context um, that we're going to be using thanks to um, identity asp net identity that we have set up so if we go back into our startup we have some options that we can set up here and the template has um, set up SQLite as the database that it would like to use. Um, but we're going to immediately change this to use our Postgres database. So what I'm going to do here is rather than use SQLite is I'm going to use NPG SQL. Um, so this is one of the packages that we installed earlier. And um, then we essentially just pass that a connection string um, so that the context knows where to look um, when it's looking for a Postgres database to retrieve some data or work with some data. So what I'm going to do is just go ahead and delete what's in here and then we're going to create a var connection string and I'm just going to paste that here. So I'm just going to pull out the connection string into a var because we're going to be using it in a few other places. And I'll put some comments here just in case it helps. Um, cover what we're doing. So we're going to uh, store a connection string as a var, and so I'll move that up here. And what we did here was replace the um, DB context database or the one that's pointing to here um, from uh, SQLite, which was in the template, to Postgres. And again, that's provided this u by this use npg SQL. Um, if you're not seeing this imported, go ahead and um, import it. It looks like uh, Visual Studio Code does this for us automatically. Uh, but this should be coming from Microsoft.Entity Framework Core, I believe. And in fact, if we um, F12 over there to see where that's coming from, the namespace uh, here is Microsoft Entity Framework Core.
Okay, next it looks like um, identity, ASP.NET identity has already been um, added to our services container here. And we're going to be using um, a user called application user um, with an identity role. So what I'm going to do now is go ahead and F12 over to application user. And you can see that this was provided for us as part of the template as well. And it just is a concrete class that implements this identity user base class. And if we F12 there, we can, see, we can see that this is the default implementation of the Microsoft ASP.NET Core identity identity user, um, which uses a string as a primary key. So this is our sort of user object that we'll be storing in the database. And we're using a particular implementation of it, um, which we haven't customized at all here. But as you can see in the comment, this is where we can add profile data, um, by adding different properties to this object if that's something that we would like. We're going to leave the Entity Framework Stores um, and Default Token Providers methods here. Um, next you can see that we are adding MVC to our application. We're calling uh, .configure to configure some options here. Um, we can see that this just has to do with IIS if we're on Windows. Um, I don't think that this is really strictly necessary for what we'll be doing, but I'm going to go ahead and leave it here as part of the template that we're using. Um, and then we have this uh, very important iIdentityServerBuilder object here. Um, and you can see that we could supply some options to it here. Um, and then we can chain on some additional methods here to define how we're actually storing um, the different resources that are required and clients for our um, identity server for applications. So what we're going to do is remove the in-memory stores and we're going to store all of the uh, configuration as well as um, sort of like the operational data within our Postgres database and not in some in-memory store. So we can go ahead and configure that right away here. Um, for that we're going to use a configuration store. And this is going to take a lambda. We're going to call it config db. And we can use this to actually configure the particular DB context that we're going to be using here. So we're going to configure DB context. And um, we can set it up like this, where we can just say, um, for this, we're going to use NPG SQL again. And again, provide the connection string. And then um, we have a callback here, an action where we can set the particular migration assembly. And we'll talk about that in just a second. So we're going to call this, um, well, we're going to store that in a variable, just migrations assembly. And that is this assembly um, for this project. So what we're going to do is come up a bit and maybe just below where we defined our connection string as a var, we're going to store the assembly for migrations here as well. And all this is is the name of the current assembly, which we can get using reflection here. So say type of startup, which is this class, and we can get the type info. Um, the get type info method is actually on system.reflection. So we'll import that, um, the assembly, and then we'll get its name. And then uh, we have this name property to go ahead and get that. So if we come back down now, We've added a configuration store for our config DB. So all this is really saying is that we're going to use our um, Postgres database for storing configuration data. And then likewise, we're going to um, call the same method again here, um, the second set of data that we need to store in our uh, Postgres database is the sort of operational data, so things like tokens. Um, so we're going to go ahead and just make a comment that says use our Postgres database for storing operational data. This is just the data that Identity Server needs to, um, to use. So we're going to come back up here and I'm just going to correct a typo. And just to make this a little bit clearer, I'm going to call this lambda operational db. 
we're going to use the same uh, context, uh, the same connection string here. So we'll be using the same database for all of this. And so everything here will stay the same. And we need to go ahead and get rid of this semicolon. And I'm just going to move this add ASP.NET identity out here. Looks like I had it duplicated for some reason anyway. So um, that will come after we add both of these uh, configuration stores. And just have a typo here. Yeah, we'll call this operational DB. So note that we could have these in separate databases um, if that's something that we would like to do. Um, so in fact, we could keep all of this separate from even our user data. So if we come back up here, um, our application database is also using um, the same connection string, the same database. These could actually be three separate databases um, if for some reason that's something that we would like to do. Next, what we'll do is we'll say that if we're um, just working in a development environment here, then we're going to use a developer signing credential. So this is just going to set a temporary signing credential for signing tokens. Um, if we were in production, we will need to configure our key material um, in some other appropriate way. Uh, but we can talk about that in a little while. Looks like it's scaffolded out some authentication um, using Google here for us. We can see that there are other ones that are sort of baked in. Um, Facebook, Microsoft, Twitter, um, that sort of thing. We're just going to leave this in for now, um, but we won't be explicitly using anything like this right away. So now if we go back up towards the top of this method where we define this var connection string, you can see that we have this helper method get connection string that's on the configuration object um, and we pass it this string default connection. So what this is doing is it's going to look in our app settings.json file here, um, which is just a JSON object that has this connection strings object, um, which could have a collection of uh, different connection strings that we have that we would like to connect to. So we're going to be using Postgres for our application and so we need to provide an appropriate Postgres connection string here. So I'm just going to go ahead and delete what I have in quotes and we'll be running um, Postgres on localhost port 5432 so the connection string starts with server localhost port 5432 um, the database that we'll create we'll just call this um, arch the database that we'll create we'll call archdb underscore dev we're going to provide a user ID that we'll create and we'll call this arch agent and the password here uh, we'll just hard code into the connection string for now and this will be tilde pass one two three tilde and we'll make sure that we put a semicolon at the end of the statement 